AMC kicks Bishop Barber out of the color purple screening. Okay, that's the movie. The bishop went to see and was told, you're out of here. Uh, Let's uh, give you the video because they didn't just kick him out. The police were called. I'm going to take you out. I cannot go out. Okay, I'm going to take you out. I'm going to tell you, you got to remove the property and I'm going to take you out and I'll charge you you on my car. That's fine. If you you want to take me out and leave the property, I'll do that. Yep, that's what I want to do. All right, well, you're going to have to put me out. I'm going to have to put you in the I've been in the White House with this chair. Yeah. They've called an officer of the law, the AME Theater in Greenville, North Carolina. They would not make amends to simply do the right thing, but we'll deal with it. They brought this officer. What's your name, Mr. Officer? Sergeant. Can I shake your hand? I ain't trying to. Yeah, do- absolutely. Okay, this is Lemon. Officer Lemon. I want to know your name. Yeah, that's fine. No problem. All right, thank you guys. Appreciate your cooperation. Sorry for the, the way this turned out. We'll be back in a little bit. Okay, that's, that's fine, but you do have to leave the. Hope everyone in Greenville, North Carolina, going to the movies feels a lot safer now. Okay, as the bishop was escorted out by the police, several <laughs> officers on the scene. Does everyone feel safe now? A threat is out of the movie theater. Bishop Barber preaching on his way out. A dispute about movie theater seating led to the removal of Bishop William J. Barber, the second former chair of the North Carolina NAACP, prominent civil rights activist from a Greenville, North Carolina movie theater. The incident happened Tuesday afternoon when Bishop Barber went to the AMC Fire Tower 12 Theater to see a much heralded the color purple. Who did he take as his date? His 90 year old mother, okay? You happy, you proud. As ABC 11 reports, Barber uses two canes due to difficulty walking and sitting in certain chairs because of a form of arthritis he has, which causes inflammation in the joints and ligaments of the spine. Bishop usually takes his own chair, which resembles a bar chair to public events. They probably should have seating for people who have other afflictions that can't sit comfortably in a movie theater seat, okay? They probably should have something for someone who I don't know, colors outside the lines because of a physical ailment. It's my thought, just my thought. Uh, That's what he did Tuesday, setting it up in the theater section designated for people with disabilities. However, he claims he was told that was not allowed. Eventually conversations between Barber and a theater staffer escalated. Greenville police were called. I wonder if they had the sirens going, lights flashing when they pulled up for this amazing threat. Police responded about 3.20 p.m. Hey, this is in the afternoon. After they were told that a customer was arguing with employees and they wished to have them removed from the business, ABC 11. Gotta be careful what you tell the police. That's right. Belligerent black man in a theater. I'm surprised they didn't come in with guns drawn. This is over a chair and a disability? Police supervisor went to the theater. Spoke with everyone and Barber agreed to leave the theater voluntarily, police said. Barber was already outside when a second police supervisor arrived, two supervisors. And the conflict was resolved without incident. No charges were filed. In a video, Barber appeared to say staffers told him the positioning of his chair was a fire hazard. Okay. In a statement he wrote in part, 
This is about how people with disabilities, regardless of race, color, creed, or sexual orientation should be treated fairly. With all the issues and real battles going on in the world for managers of a theater to decide they can't accommodate you and would rather remove you from a theater is absurd, which is why I prayed for them. Boy, he got him, didn't he? He got him. I'm gonna just pray for you. I'm gonna just pray for you. That's what the bishop does, no matter who it is. In this case, praying for someone he vehemently disagrees with. In a statement, AMC apologized for the incident and stated AMC chairman and CEO Adam Aaron telephoned the bishop about plans to meet with him in person next week to discuss the situation. He looks tired already. I mean, I'm sure this is an older picture, but it, the CEO of AMC looks tired after this drama that was unnecessary. Just my commentary there. AMC statement continued, AMC welcomes guests with disabilities. We have a number of accommodations in place at our theaters at all times and our theater teams work hard to accommodate guests who have needs that fall outside of the normal course of business. We encourage guests who require special seating to speak with a manager in advance to see what can best be accommodated at the theater to ensure a safe and enjoyable experience for the guests and those around them. We're also reviewing our policies with our theater teams to help ensure that situations like this do not occur again. In a statement from Repairs of the Breach, Barbara's social movement group, Barbara agreed to meet with AMC's Aaron next week and was hopeful it would lead to well, just and good things for those with disabilities. Barbara held a news conference today in Greenville for ABC News. He said he placed a share in a section specifically designated for guests with disabilities, which prompted safety concerns from theater employees. Barbara alleged she was threatened with trespassing charges when he refused to leave. The incident later prompted a conversation about accommodations for disabled people and accessibility in public places. So a couple of things before I turn it over to you, Ida. Somebody's going to write a check that's going to help Bishop Barber do some good things in the community. That's just what I see. I've got like this. I'm not exactly a fortune teller, but I kind of can see what's going down here. Okay, the CEO is going to meet with him. He's going to write a check because this was wrong. And if it's an area where perhaps wheelchairs are allowed to park it and watch the movie, I'm not sure what makes the chair an additional fire hazard. But then again, not in the movie theater business. But why you would threaten this person, it leads me to believe that you saw a black man, you weren't going to argue with him. And so you just decided, move along. And if I'm the CEO, because you can't legislate everything, you can't draw policies to deal with every situation. I want smart, resourceful human beings working for me. And I don't want people who draw attention like this and the popo shows up in the middle of what? The color purple. Really? That's just my thought, Ida. How about yours? You know, I agree with you. I think that um, I think when we talk about these things, uh, we got to go back a little bit and understand why uh, people. Some people will defend and say, "Hey, this is a person at their job, and they're doing their job, and they're following the rules." The cop comes there; they're there to enforce. They can't. Um, they cannot reestablish what the the establishment or the business's rules are. They have to enforce the law, blah, blah, blah. Sure. But I just really want people to understand that when people see Black and brown people as less than human, when they don't see a full human being there, all possibilities for empathy, consideration, are, they're all out of the window. And so when you hear these stories when and people say, well, he was following the rules, imagine uh, a la Matthew McConaughey in A Time to Kill, if that would have mm. been an older white gentleman with his older mother, would they have been treated the same? Now, we can only speculate that it would be different because we can't for sure say that it wasn't. This person could just be ageist. And could do that to anybody. But I've, I'm inclined to believe that there's less, you know, compassion when it comes to yeah. people of color because 
a lot of these people don't see us as full mm-hmm. human beings. Yeah. And so this is why we fight. Because you can and well within your right, right feel whatever you way, whatever way you want about me. My issue is when you those beliefs are <laughs> interrupting my pursuit of life, happiness, and fullness. Mm-hmm. And that is where we have the issue. I don't give a damn about these racist white people in this country. Mm-hmm. I don't like you either. I don't care about those people. Just stay out of my way. Yeah. Can we just leave each other alone? And you're exactly right because, again, I don't want to hear any more about we need more police training. No, we. I can't get you to see me as a human being by giving you police training. I just can't. It's like Barack Obama said, we can't bomb everyone. We have to reach hearts and minds. And we're still not getting it. We're still not getting it. You are so right. 